Are you here? <laughs> well, yes, you are. Hello, and welcome to the Paul Leslie Hour, home of interviews with the greatest artists ever. Today, we're welcoming blues man Charlie Musselwhite. Right about now, harmonica player, singer, guitarist, Charlie Musselwhite will be talking about his new record, Mississippi Sun. He'll also be talking about his forthcoming appearance at the 2023 New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Mm-hmm. You know, the Paul Leslie Hour is made possible by, go ahead, break your arm, pat yourself on the back. We're made possible by folks like you. You can visit at www.thepaulleslie.com slash support. And before you go there, we say thanks. Okay, Paul. Is it now? All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be joined by the great Charlie Musselwhite. Thank you so much for making the time to talk with us. My pleasure. So you are joining us right now from Mississippi, correct? I'm in Clarksdale, Mississippi, in the, in the Mississippi Delta. All right. So... Charlie, what has always been the purpose of the art you create? <laughs> the purpose of the blues? Yeah. Well, you know, blues has a spirit to it about uh, keeping on, keeping on, uh, not giving up. You know, like in country music, a guy might sing about, my baby left me, I'm going to go jump off the bridge and kill myself. And blues... <laughs> He was saying about my baby left me, and I'm going to get me a new baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's a perseverance to blues music. Yes, yeah, the spirit of uh, keeping on, keeping on. And yeah. Survive. It's a whole attitude about life, you know, just facing it head on. Right, right. So, Charlie. Have you found music has had a special ability to bring folks together? Oh, sure. Uh, for all kinds of reasons and all different situations. Uh, my favorite is to be at a festival where you see whole families and they're all smiling or dancing and enjoying the music together. But I also like playing the little juke joints around Clarksville, Mississippi, where uh, well, you don't see any kids in those places. <laughs> but uh, all my time in Chicago and touring the world, it's always great to see the effect that music has on people. Who is the greatest example of raw talent that you've ever seen? You've seen a lot of acts through the years. You've recorded with a lot of people. The greatest raw talent you've seen. Raw? What do you mean by raw talent? <laughs> well, you know how sometimes you just see somebody and there's just something about them that's it's so uninhibited that, you know, you almost swear that they were born with it. Well, there's so many. Well, a great example is Kingfish. He's, he learned how to play right here at the, Right here in town is the Delta Blues Museum, and they have an after-school program for kids to learn how to play blues. And uh, I can see it out my other window over here. Anyhow, Kingfish learned how to play guitar right there in the at the Delta Blues Museum. And he's just an amazing talent. He's a young man, and uh, he's got a long way to go, and he's going to do well. He's already doing great. How important is emotion to what you do with blues music? Oh, that's the whole thing. Uh, without emotion, it's not really blues. Uh, and you, you get the, the emotion in the tone. Uh, you could be a, a great musician and have all kind of technique, but if you don't have tone, you're not saying much, you know? So that's where the heart of it is. The, the feeling is in the tone. And if you get enough tone, one note's all you need. You can say everything. Hmm. Somebody else might play thousands of notes, but they come off just sounding like somebody with a 
huge vocabulary and nothing to say. <laughs> well, on that note, what, what are you trying to say when you do a show? What, is, there, is there a message you try to convey? Well, in blues, the way I feel about it is, uh, you know, blues can be uh, your comforter when you're down and your buddy when you're up. It's the all-purpose music, but it's all from the heart. It's all about the human condition, up or down, you know. Found love, lost love, out of work, found a job. It's, it's, it's the all-purpose music. And it's it's a, on a real human level how we all have our ups and downs uh, all over the world. Uh, you know, blues, sometimes people describe blues as being three chords and there's the blues scale and all that. And that's a nice way to express blues, but uh, it's, the feeling is, I'm sure there's a guy on the corner of, all over the world singing about my baby left me in his local culture uh, style of music. And that's the blues. It might not sound exactly like blues from Mississippi, but it's coming from the heart. And I've met players in other parts of the world where we couldn't speak the same language, but since we were playing from the heart, we could play together effortlessly. So when you're coming from the heart, like blues should be to make it really blues, hmm. that's where the feeling and, and that's what it's about and, and connecting with each other. Right. You hear the guy play a line or say something, you go, yeah, because you understand it, you recognize it. Even in other cultures where people hear blues for the first time, they don't really know what it is, but they recognize the feeling. Mm. That's fascinating. Yeah. You're going to be performing at this year's, the 2023 New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival there in Louisiana, down in Louisiana. I mean, yeah. how many times have you played that festival? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. At least a half a dozen times, I think. Yeah. Uh, probably the first time I played there was maybe in the 80s. Or I'm, not, I'm not sure. When you're on the road 200 days a year, it's hard to keep track of stuff like that. Right. Is that would you say that the the New Orleans Jazz Fest is it is it different from a lot of the other festivals you played? It sure has a great feeling to it, and you have all these tents. You know, you have the gospel tent and the traditional jazz tent and the blues tent and um, the Zydeco tent, and, and they serve a lot of local kind of food. You know, gumbo and stuff, and it's oh man, it's just a great great festival very colorful and um it's just beautiful do you check out a lot of acts do you go see shows a good bit do i go out to see shows yeah do you do you go just go out to see different different people's acts a good bit oh yeah here in clarksdale there's a lot there's live blues every night all year long and uh Lots of festivals, and uh, so for me, if I'm home, it's fun to go out and watch somebody else work. <laughs> but right. when I'm on the road, and I'm on the road a lot, I don't really have time to, unless, some, unless I'm at a festival where there's other bands, I don't really have time to get out that much. And I'm always on the go. Who out there, not, not just in blues, just music as a whole, who has impressed you that's, that's still working today? Oh gosh, Mavis Staples. Yeah, yeah, she's a real good friend, and and I've been a fan of the Staples Singers since, oh, I guess the early '60s or late '50s, whenever their first records came out. And uh, I knew Pops and Yvonne and Cleedy and Mavis is the last one. And we're real good friends. Mavis Staples has always come across as a, a very genuine kind of person. I've never met her, but she's a come across that way. 
There's not a drop of jive in that lady. She's sincere, right from the heart, no baloney. And she's just a delightful human being. That's wonderful. Is there a compliment that you've gotten that has meant the most to you through the years? Oh, well, one that just I just happened to see the other day was a quote. Uh, I, I think it was by Danny Ackroyd. He was talking about uh, how he got the image for Elwood Blues from me. And I think he also said something like when he was 16, he wanted to be Charlie Musselwhite, something like that. I thought that was. And he's told me that uh, about getting the look for Elwood Blues uh, from seeing me when he was an, a college student. And he would go to a club that I played at. and I didn't wear a hat. I didn't have uh, handcuffs on my heart case, but I wore, back then I'd wear a black suit and had my hair slicked back and with shades and ordered toe shoes. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a compliment. Oh, yeah, that's bragging rights. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just curious, did did you know, uh, he doesn't play anymore, but he he's still with us. Did you know the harmonica player and singer Greg Fingers Taylor? Oh, yeah, I knew him. Uh, first time I met him was in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, I think he was living there. And I saw him a couple of other times. Uh, didn't get to know him real well, but we were, like, very friendly. He was a real nice guy. I enjoyed getting to know him. I've been listening to this latest record of you of yours, Mississippi Sun. Oh. And the vocals are, I think, in particular, really impressive. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. How, would, how did you develop your voice? How did you learn how to sing? <laughs> I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, just trial and error, you know, just trying to, you know, sing from my heart. Uh, I don't consider myself a singer. Uh, maybe vocalist is a better word. I just try to be in key and and uh, remember the words and deliver them the best way I can. It's, and it's all from the heart. You know, I figure if you're performing, whether you're playing or singing from your heart, even if you're making mistakes or it's not exactly perfect, the feeling is more likely to come through, and that's what people respond to. Mm. I can see that. Yeah. Something that I... Th that I find I especially like as far as blues singers goes, I like the records where there's lots of, of, of soft and louder parts, you know, like some of the real great blues singers and you included will sing some of the parts down low and then some of the parts down loud. I've listened to records where everything seems like it's just full on loud and it's, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, they're just beating you over the head with it. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah, I don't, you know, the up and down part, they call that dynamics. Right. But I, I think with good music, you don't have to beat people over the head with it. Uh, you know, like a beautiful painting or something, you should be able to just look at it and get it. Not have to have somebody explain it to you. You should relate to it on some level. You're on your own human experience level by just seeing it or just hearing the music. Uh, you don't have to like turn it up full blast to get your attention. If that's what it takes, then there's something missing in the music. Right. Or the right. performer or both. <laughs> hmm. What would you say is more important when you're going to go into music? Is it, is it better to have humility or is it better to have confidence? What was the first one? Is it better to have humility or is it better to have confidence? Gosh, uh, they both kind of like both sides of a coin. Uh, well, I know musicians that have no humility <laughs> and yeah. total confidence. And uh, 
it kind of comes across in their music. It doesn't have the feeling in it. Uh, I think a more sensitive person, especially in blues or jazz or gospel, or <laughs> I could go on and on. Uh, if you're presenting some art from your heart, uh, you need to be uh, humble and uh, confident or not. Uh, that comes through in the music. Confidence is nice to have, but I don't think it's the most important thing. I wouldn't mind hmm. having confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. No kidding. What is the best thing about being Charlie Muscle White? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel pretty fortunate that uh, these things have kind of worked out in this music business for me. I, I, I never got into the music with a, a vision of being on stage and being in the spotlight and having a career in music. I just really love the music and just had to play it. Uh, even if I'd never had a career in music, I, it's still something I would do. I would be playing it just for myself and for nobody else. But uh, so I'm real thankful that it, it worked out to where I could have a make a living as a musician. That was uh, pretty nice because I, I didn't really like working in factories and <laughs> day jobs and stuff like that. So it's been really a nice ride. Ain't been easy. <laughs> but, but it's been good and it's, it keeps getting better I was talking to the guitarist Pat Matheny one time and he told me he said if nobody came and saw me play if I had no audience whatsoever I'd still be in my room somewhere playing exactly that's it <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. same for you some people actually I've, I've had musicians tell me that the reason they got into music because they love the spotlight. They love the attention. They love, you know, the, all that stuff. Uh, but not all of us feel that way. I never craved to be in the spotlight. You know, it's, the way it turns out is you have to be, but uh, uh, I just assume not be in the spotlight. Yeah. I just love music, that's all. And I love to play yeah. it. And I like to be able to, reach people with the music and have it mean something to them. Hmm. It's about us. It ain't about me. Right, right. Well, what is it like when you're after a show or before a show and somebody comes up to you and you kind of get a sense that they're adoring you? <laughs> well, I, I, I admire their taste. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I appreciate that when people they like what I'm doing. It it, it means a lot, and I, I uh, they deserve respect for that. Having that uh, that they they get what you're trying to do, uh, it means a lot, and uh, I really appreciate it. But it doesn't go to my head. It doesn't make me feel like I'm a better person than somebody else or something just because they like the music. I just feel like, well, I've, uh, I've been successful in, with this job I have. You know? That's right. Nice. Yeah. Well, I always like to, I like to end my talks with a very open-ended question. You just never know who's tuned in. You know, there, there's people I hear from all around the world what would you say to anybody who's tuned in with us? <laughs> well, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're uh, healthy and happy and enjoying life and uh, buy my latest record. <laughs> That's right. And people can even get the new record on vinyl, which is special. Yes, yeah, blue vinyl. Yeah. It's an attractive album. <laughs> right. Suitable for framing. <laughs> Suitable for framing. Mississippi Sun. And everybody, yeah. it's charliemusclewhite.com, right? Yeah. 
And on this album, I'm, I'm playing all the guitar. A lot of people don't know I even play guitar. But, and I recorded it just three blocks from here. Um, it's all happened right here in Clarksdale, and I overdubbed my harmonica. I can play harmonica on a rack a little bit, but I play it so much better when I'm holding it, so I did it that way. And we had a local drummer named Quicksand and a, a bass player named Barry Bass sit in on a few tunes. But it was kind of an accident. It started out, the pandemic was on, everything was shut down, and I was just hanging out at my friend's studio playing guitar. And he said, man, you mind if I tape some of these? I said, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so every time I'd be over there, we'd tape another couple of tunes. And my wife at one point said, you know, this could be an album. So uh, that's how it got started. And it turned out okay. What do you think about the uh, the old adage behind every successful man, there's a woman showing him the way? <laughs> well, there's a whole lot of truth in that. Um, I know Henrietta pulled me through the knot hole. <laughs> uh, I'd probably be dead now if it wasn't for her. Oh, wow. Maybe not that drastic, but uh, <laughs> it sure has been a better life with her. Is there a track on the Mississippi Sun record that you think best represents the album? Well, I have to pick it up and look at it because I don't remember the tunes on there. Yeah, and hold it up for the folks at home. There we go. Blues gave me a ride is the first one is a lot of people like that. Blues tells the truth in a world full of lies. That's a good one. <laughs> good collection of tunes there. Hold yeah. it a little closer. There we go. Pick it up, folks. <laughs> yeah that that's a picture that's my Cadillac We're in the parking lot of a church down the road here uh, out, on, uh, out on Highway 49 great photo yeah they took that with a, uh, we, those things that fly uh, it's, a, it's a camera but he the remote controls, it was flying over overhead. There's a word for it, I can't think of. Oh, yeah, it's one of those uh, drones. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Charlie Musselwhite, it's been great spending time with you. You're real cool to talk to, and I appreciate this a lot. Well, it's been a real pleasure to talk with you, and uh, let's do it again sometime. I hope. I hope to repeat. <laughs> oh, well, your audience enjoys it too. I enjoyed it myself. All right, Charlie. Until next time. Keep the dirty side down. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So long. So long. Uh, upward and inward. <laughs> you know, the Paul Leslie Hour is made possible by people like you, listeners, viewers. Please go to thepaulleslie.com slash support and you'll know what to do when you're there thank you thank you everyone who contributes performance of the entertainer intro song by john primerano and of course this is your announcer speaking see you next time on the paul leslie hour